I greet you all, Cross Point, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, it's me. I'm with you again. I would like to push a little bit forward on the message, the light of understanding. The light of understanding. I spoke to you last Sunday that it's not enough to rise. You must rise intentionally. You might rise with understanding. Because if you rise by mistake, you will fear your success. Why? Because you will not know how to preserve it. We do not want this generation to stumble into success or to rise to the top by mistake. We need to buy into the wisdom and understanding of God regarding system, how to set in place framework for our generation, for our sons and daughters, so they can have the upper hand in their generation. That's why we have to rise by light, not by mistake. Galatians 2.2 2 said, And I went up by revelation, not by desire. I went up by understanding, not by desire. I went up by light, not by desire. Many people in this generation are filled with dreams, projects, desires, and hidden with good intention. But it's not enough. You have to get to the top by revelation, by understanding, not by desire. Because life does not honor intention. God and life honor a heart of understanding. We have to acquire understanding. In all you're getting, get understanding. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I said last time to our leaders, the call of God does not guarantee success. Just because you have a dream or you have an idea or a project or a pursuit, it does not guarantee success. You still need to learn and to prepare to acquire the understanding that you need to fulfill that call or that project or that dream. That's why speaking today about the light of understanding, I would like to emphasize a little bit on the understanding that can only be acquired by preparation. By preparation. Hallelujah. If there is one thing our generation do not like, it is preparation. We don't like to prepare because preparation demands a price to be paid. It demands patience. It demands to serve. It demands to be patient. It demands to pay a price. Hallelujah. It's a sacrifice and we do not like to hear that word. I want this church. It is my greatest desire. It's for every one of you. To rise up to the top with understanding. To rise up to the top with revelation. To rise up to the top with wisdom. To embrace and to master the system that God will reveal to you in this season. So that you can command in your domain and in your sphere of authority. That's what my dream is and that's my wish for you in this house. Hallelujah. We cannot drag from behind anymore. 2020 is the year of expansion. We need to command in our generation. We need to fulfill what is written about us in the scriptures that we are not the tail, but we are the head. We are blessed in the city and we are blessed outside of the city. We have to actualize those promises and make them a reality so our family can benefit of it, our church can benefit of it, our communities can benefit of it, and the nation will benefit of it. It is time to rise up people of God with understanding and lead our generation. Hallelujah. Allow me to tell you that the quality of every delivery, wherever will be an outcome or an output, it depends mainly on the quality of your preparation. On the quality of your preparation. The reason probably you have not reached yet where you thought you were supposed to be today Many, many among us, it might be simply because of what you have not learned yet. There's still something God want to prepare you. He want to build you into so that you don't become a stranger to your future blessing. That's wisdom I'm giving you. Embrace it. 
Let it pierce your heart. Let it find a place to settle in your spirit so it can bring up fruit in its season. David was prepared in the field before he became a king and a giant killer. He was prepared in the field. You will not achieve what God has for you without preparation. We don't stumble into success. It's not a luck thing. It's about diligence. It's about paying the price. It's about preparation. David was prepared in the field. And guess what? His tools of preparation, his guinea pigs, were lions and bears. You go figure that out. That was not the real deal. His guinea pigs were lions, Magadaya, and bears. It tells you a little bit of what kind of dimension this boy will operate into. When you look at your training place and see the stuff you are facing, the struggle you have to overcome, the challenges hidden in the, in the background, in the low level, you still fight such a strong demonic entities. It gives you a little clue of what God has for you in your days of glory. Hallelujah. You go figure out that. Preparation will secure mastery. It's when you prepare that you become a master. You don't become a master by prayer. You become a master by exercise. Marabongaya. You become a master by preparation. And that's what David, because once you acquire mastery, you will command elevation. That's what David did. God prepare him. He become a master. Why did he become a master? He didn't become a master of a Kalashin cover M16. He didn't become a master of a bow. He become a master of a slingshot. Hear me, brother and sister. It's not the size of your gift that will give you command. It is how much you can master that gift God gives you. He refused to take the weapons of King Saul because even though they were farouche and powerful weapons, David was not a master in that arena. I want to command you, the area where you will command, it is the area that you have mastered by preparation. I hope somebody is being blessed this morning. I hope somebody is picking up what I'm speaking this morning. I hope somebody's heart is being stood up this morning. And if I'm speaking to you, somebody shout right now, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you. Somebody said, yes, I hear you. Somebody scream, yes, I hear you. My spirit hear you. My mind hear you. My emotions are grabbing you. My intellect is hearing you. I'm being filled. Somebody say, yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He said to the king, thank you for your mighty weapon. But in my place of preparation, I have learned how to use another tool. My gift might not be as strong as yours. My gift might not be as relevant and powerful as yours. Small as it might be, I am a master of my gift. I have become a slave of my gift. I have gained mastery in my gift. Hear me. It's not how, how much gifted you are. It's how good you are in using your gift. How much mastery can you command related to your gift today? Hallelujah. David uses slingshot and he tear down the enemy. It's not about how powerful your gift is. Let me repeat that. It's how good you are in using it. Having a gift does not confer automatically mastery. You have to train. You have to spend time training, being prepared, being challenged. You have to prepare, being challenged, sitting down, looking and serving and doing things that are so manual, but yet it is a place of preparation so you can acquire light to maximize your gift. Many people work so hard to produce and at the end of the day, whatever they produce does not remain. Have you ever wondered? They pick up a business, they build it quickly, and then it falls down to pieces. They engage in ministry. It's revival for the first one year. And then pff, it falls back apart. They engage in projects. It's a matter of time. People clap hands. Before they stop clapping, it is falling down. Have you ever wondered why people do so much thing but nothing remains? Let me give you one reason why. It's simply because they have cheated 
with God's process of preparation. If you cheat with God's process of preparation, whatever you build will not remain. You have to buy in the process of preparation by paying the price so you can acquire understanding that no book can give you, no Google can give you, only under the prophetic path of preparation that you'll acquire such understanding. Hallelujah. We must maintain, therefore, the ability, hear me, of not only admiring the great achievement of man. Listen to me. Sometimes you look at people who have done so amazing and you wow, look at how powerful this is. This guy was from mega church. He has a world influence. Wow, look at this ministry. It's thriving. Wow, look at this business. My goodness, everybody need him. He is positioned in this same earth like everybody else, but he has the upper hand. He is thriving. He has national preeminence. He has national authority. He has national recognition. And we are mesmerized by such people. We want to be like them. We feel like, wow, they were born from another planet. What? Listen to me. It is good to look at such people. To look at their finished work. But we must understand that there is certain thing that cannot be imparted. These people will not just come and lay hand on you and suddenly you find yourself on the top of the mountain. There is certain thing that cannot be imparted. These are track records. It is points of reference. They have been through hell and come out on the other side. It track records. It's not by chance or luck. Even if they inherited from their parent, if they did not get the pathway of preparation and pay the cost, it will stumble down. It struck records. Hallelujah. Therefore, Church Cross Point, Halibon Sangaya, in 2020, the year of expansion, I have come by the apostolic voice to challenge you. We need to enlarge our willingness to be taught. We need to enlarge our willingness to be prepared, to be trained in a wide range spectrum of truth. Wide range spectrum of truth. We need to expand our capacity. If we have to engage in expansion, God must expand our intellect. He has to expand our emotional range. He has to expand our spirit. He has to expand our capacity. A wide range of truth. You know, sometimes people feel like because I'm so good in this area of truth in the Bible, I'm okay. No, you're not okay. We need a wide range of truth because the truth in Scripture do not replace themselves. They complement themselves. Let me explain what I mean by that. Just because you are a prayer warrior, it doesn't exempt you from the principle or the law of sowing and reaping. Because your prayer life was not made to be a supplement to those things. You have to acquire understanding in all areas of truth. If you want to be a commander in your generation. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of system. I told you that last week. God is a God of systems. He reproduced man only once. And then after that, man reproduced himself. Because there's a system of procreation that has been implanted in him. From that day, God set back and let it run. We live in the solar system. God placed the sun and the planets around the sun. And once he finished to do that, he set back in his throne. And they run by themselves. You don't need to speak to the sun to rise up in the morning from the east. He knows from the east I will rise until the end of day. That's a system. And we need to understand that, that God is a God of system. And each system has an operation cost. Let me repeat that. Every system of success has an operation cost. You will not reach out into success without paying a price. You hear me say that often. On the marketplace of life, oh, I feel the anointing. On the marketplace of life, you have the right to pick up your cart and walk in the superstore of the marketplace of life. 
Pick up any dream you want. Pick up any desire and any project. You can empty all the shelf and use a multitude of carts. Not only one cart. Just fill them up with everything you want. Fill them up with every dream. Fill them up. That's okay. Nobody will stop you. But remember there is a till you have to pass by. And at the till, there is a price to pay. It is not enough to dream. It is not enough to have a project. It is not enough to have good intention and desires. Are you willing to pay the price for the dream that you pick on? As the kingdom of God, you have to pay the price. You can use something to supplement for the other one. It doesn't work that way. Because the kingdom of God is operated by a cost. And you must pay the price. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you have to pay extra price. I feel like taking a pause and think a little bit. Sometimes you got to pay an extra price, not just the price. Many of you sitting here under the sound of my voice, you have paid the price, but God demand you in 2020, pay an extra price. Kongo langa yanga ya, vase epre la paki a paramasi andoste. Legondo si al palende ri atosi abakaya. Somebody got to be willing to pay an extra price. Somebody got to be willing to pay an extra cost. The Bible tells us about the ten virgin in the New Testament. They all had oil. They paid the price to have oil. But time of preparation went by. And five of them ran out of oil. The other five has paid extra oil. They are paid the price for extra oil. The Bible called them wise. If you are wise, you must rise up in this season and say, it's not enough for me just to pay the price. I want to go to another level of dimension. I must pay an extra price. So when time tarry, when things tarry, when my blessing tarry, when my glory tarry, when my manifestation tarry, when my promise tarry, I do not give up because I have come prepared to pay an extra price. That's what set us apart between the wise and the foolish. You see the foolish didn't just have no oil. Even though they had oil, the Bible said they are foolish. Why? Because they did not have extra oil. I want to provoke you to go to another dimension. We need an extra little prayer. We need an extra little giving more. We need an extra little patience. We need a little extra humility. We are to upgrade our sacrifice. We are to upgrade our sacrifice. Gongolando ya kataya. We need extra oil for the prophetic journey that has been set before us. Extra oil for the moment of pain and betrayal, disappointment and hurts, for the curveballs and the tragedies and the unexpected deep valleys that God is calling us to cross. It means there's no time for you to give up. Get extra oil for the journey. Hallelujah. You know, this generation, we like to hurry. We like to get everything so quickly. McDonald's system, microwave system. Those systems will not acquire for you the understanding that you need for your greatest elevation. They are too quick. They are too quick. When you hurry in life, it's a dangerous thing. It's a big problem. When you lead in an area and you lack understanding in that area. Do not allow that. Don't allow yourself to be lifted up or to be raised in a place where you lack understanding. Do not allow yourself to stumble by accident or by mistaken to success. It will destroy you. Today, you look around. I don't know how many books 
are about purpose and vision. Today is all about vision and purpose. And that's okay. Because without vision, my people perish. I do understand that. But it's not enough. Knowing what God has called you for is not enough. Knowing what God has called you to do is not enough. Knowing your place in life and in destiny is not enough. Knowing your purpose is not enough. Having a dream and a vision is not enough. Sometimes I can hear boastful speeches and declaration and confession. Yet, that's not enough. You must be willing to pay the price of preparation. You must be willing to pay the price of preparation. To sacrifice that your success required. You have been doing so well. But God is speaking to you. 2020, a year of expansion, entering this decade. We have to upgrade our level of sacrifice. It's not enough to know how gifted you are and what God has for you and you know what is your purpose and the vision and the project and what you would like to do. It's not enough. Jesus said if one man want to build, let him sit first. Magalonde, Bruce e and he said, calculate the cost of finishing, not starting. You have to finish, and to finish, you need to upgrade your level of sacrifice. You have to pay extra to finish. Jesus himself said, For this reason, the Son of Man has come. He knew why he came. At one time, from the depth, the depth of the eternal spirit, he spoke out. He said, My hour has come. He knew why he came. He knew when his hour came. But yet it was not enough. There was a cup. He couldn't escape. There was a cup to drink. That he couldn't escape. Even though he knew his hour. And he knew why he came. He knew purpose. He understood vision. He understood the reason for which he is here. But yet... There was a cup he couldn't escape. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a cup you cannot escape. It is a cup of sacrifice. You must pay the price. He said to the Zebedee's family, Mama Zebedee was very bright in the spirit. She bowed down to Jesus and said, Father, I worship you. But really, the reason I worship you is because I want a favor. You know, today, many people worship God because they want a favor from him, not because he's God. They want a healing from him, not because he's God. They want a breakthrough from him, not because he's God. They want an open door from him, not because he's God. And I want to let you know, brothers and sisters, before you ever worship, he was God. Before an angel ever worshiped, he was God. He was God just by himself without anybody worshiping him. He is not a hungry of worship and he can live without being worshipped because when he was just by himself, he was still God. She said, I worship you. And here's my two boys. Can one sit at your left and one on your right? He said, that's not the issue. That's not the problem, Mama Zebedee. That's not the business problem. That's not, that, that is not easy. It's an easy thing. But before they get in that place of elevation on the seat of honor, can they drink of the cup I'm about to drink of? That cup is not to discover vision. That cup is not for you to wake up to know your purpose. 
That cup is a cup of sacrifice. That's why I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, God has taken you on some chaotic prophetic journeys. Not because he wanted to punish you. Not because he wanted to pay back. Not because it was the devil. No. God wants to bring you in the place of preparation for your next elevation. You must pay the price before you get lifted up. The only time we start from the top is when we are digging a hole. That's the only time. Nobody get to the top without paying the price. You climb a mountain, you get to sweat. Nobody get on the mountain breathing normal. We get on the mountain breathing. <laughs> we need more air because we have labored. We have worked. We have travailed. We have sweat. We have cried. Haman Shila Mahandaya. We don't become great by chance. Samuel told Nathan in his last days, he said, David is my boy. I raised him up from the sheepfold to become the shepherd of my people Israel. Tell David, the Lord makes it hard to be a king. Not the devil. The Lord makes it hard to be a king. Your struggle you're facing, the hardship you've been going through, is not a waste. The Lord makes it hard to be a king. Sometimes those things are your, are your qualifiers. That's what will set you apart and give you a story. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's one thing to desire to sit in glory with me. But can you drink of the same cup that qualifies for a glory seat? Can you dream? Can you drink of the cup that qualifies for a glory seat? For a successful place in business? In finances, in ministry, in family, in leadership. Can you drink of that cup that qualifies for a glorious seat? Hallelujah. Jesus was aware of what he's going to and where he was here for. But it was not enough. And therefore it won't be enough for us. We don't pray ourselves into leadership or into elevation. We pay ourselves into it. Our salvation is given to us free. As the gift of God to mankind. By faith in Jesus Christ. But after that everything else brothers and sisters. You have to pay a price for greatness. You have to pay a price even for the fulfillment of the promises. Though they are yes and amen. You can have all the dreams in the spiritual realm and go to the third heaven, the second, the first, and I don't know any other area where you have come and gone and come back. At the end of the day, there is a system to translate those dreams into reality. There is a system to translate those dreams into their greatest expression. There is a system to translate those dreams to find expression in your generation. And that system operates by a cost. Pay the price to acquire the understanding that you need. Joseph, there is a relationship between the pit and the palace. David, there is a relationship between Abdullam and the throne. Death and resurrection are cure. In the same place. If you don't die, there is no multiplication. Where there is no sacrifice, there is no increase. And I want to talk to you. What is the price that is demanded of you today? To your next level of ministry. What is the price, the extra price, that is acquired of you today? For your next level in the business world. What is the price that is demanded for you to have a brilliant family? What is the price today that is demanded of you to have preeminence in your community 
or in your marketplace or in your sphere of influence? What is the price that is demanded? Don't interrupt your growth process by trying to escape. Yeah, your boss is rude. He's provoking you to get better. He's provoking you to get sick and tired that the vision of owning your own business that you have thrown in the back in the backyard you can go back and pick it up again. Sometime God will use an individual to frustrate you so he can realign you back into the path where he wanted you to be. We call them the Peninas. Penina is a powerful asset when it comes to systemic success. Powerful. Sometimes God will release a Penina who will mock you, who will push you to the edge, who will provoke you, until your spirit say enough is enough. It moves you from the place of complacency to re-embrace your destiny that you have relinquished. Because of some individual, you refuse to be a failure because you don't want them to have a time of celebration because of your failures. Sometime God will market for you and buy for you specific challenge that match your destiny, that match you. Everybody has a challenge. My challenge will be something that will make you laugh because it won't be your challenge. And some of you, your challenge will make me laugh. It won't be a challenge to me. Though God knows exactly what is your size. Ought to match a challenge to you Knowing you and where he want to take you to. Penina live with you in the same house, in the same church, in the same office, in the same business, in the same area where you function in your community. They are close enough to figure you out just by the presence you begin to tremble. God will use that to redefine you and to reposition you so you can go back to the place where he wants you to be. Don't interrupt your growth. Don't interrupt your growth process. Stick to it. Life has a curriculum for success. And that curriculum is not learned sitting in the amphitheater, air-conditioned, theater of a university. No, no, no. It's not there. Life has a curriculum that is not in Concordia University. That's not in the University of Calgary. Life has a curriculum that is not in the school academically sitting, taking notes and passing an exam. That is good for your intellect and to give you an accessory to fulfill your destiny. But life has its own curriculum. For success. And it will take you. In the process. Of passing through all seasons. Regardless of the hardship. I say all seasons. All seasons. All type of challenges. Those who don't give up. Will graduate for success. Life has curriculum that it will not tell you ahead of time. Preparation in the curriculum of life will inflict you and afflict you sometime with scars in the course of walking in it. Life has a curriculum that includes rejection, betrayal, Delusionment. When you're expecting God to do it because they had done it before and suddenly you do what you know was right to do and not the result is not according. You've been praying for that breakthrough and fasting, but you don't see the result. And sometimes delusionment will come forth. Life has a curriculum of false accusation, Joseph. Yeah, you will go to prison 12 years for something you have not done. Welcome to the curriculum of life where it is not about fairness. 
It's about a God who knows where he want to take you in his mighty sovereignty. He is setting up a system for you to make you for your days of glory. Life has a curriculum. False accusation, mistreatment, and hidden abuse and unfairness is the part of it. How do you reconcile this? When you pray for other people, they get healed. You pray for yourself, you don't get healed. Life has a curriculum. No university will do because there will be no student there. Who will buy into the class of betrayal? I'm not saying being healed from betrayal. Going through betrayal. Who will buy into a class of false accusation and delusionment. Joseph, your gift will release other from jail, but yet you will still remain there 12 years. There is a cost to pay for greatness. Your prayer move mountain for others, but your own mountain you face. God told Malaki al prale koti piyamasia. You are accepted by others, but in your own family, you are a rejected man. Galambo gayangaya dikili kataya. They see your praises out there, but in here, you are a shame, despised. Welcome to the curriculum of life where the giant, the champion, the world changers are made. The curriculum of life is not fair. They will give you scars. But here is my comfort word for you. The glory of the throne is authenticated by scars. I will say that again. The authenticity of the glory is found in scars. A glory without scars is a tomb and a danger. It will destroy you. If you get elevated to the place of preeminence without scars or preparation, you will destroy the people you lead and you will destroy yourself. The quicker you got up there, the quicker you come down. Scars always remind you that is not by your own that you were able to achieve what you achieved. Scars always keep you in a place of compassion. An understanding that can only be acquired by scars. Sometimes when you see young ministers blowing out dreams and visions and getting excited, you look at them and you enjoy their passion. But there come a time after working with the Lord, paying some prices and some costs, that your world becomes few. Because sometimes the greatest expression is to be silent. Don't be ashamed of your scars. Don't be ashamed of your scars. Each person has a path that God has designed for them. Mine is not yours. Don't be ashamed of your past. Don't be ashamed of the deep valleys. Don't be ashamed of the things that will make many people turn away from you. 
You can write your story and just talk about your great successes without mentioning your deep pains. Paul says, Let no man trouble me, for I bear the mark of the suffering of Christ. The greatest ministry that has been rejected in the church is the ministry of suffering. Everybody want a lullaby. Everybody want to make it smoothly with chanting and singing to the top without any wind of opposition, without any walls of obstacle, without anybody pushing me around. I am called to make it to the top singing a new song and a new melody to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, that mountain is a fake mountain. That mountain is an illusion mountain. That mountain is a mirage. I bear the mark of the suffering. Okay, and I'm not ashamed of it, Paul says. Devil, leave me alone. Walk the mark of the suffering that I bear with Christ. I did not say no to the path he have chosen for me. Even though they were tough and rough, yet I did not give up. I bear the mark of a suffering. Sometimes I wonder why all these different seasons of challenges sometimes didn't end like Job. One calamity after the other. Why? The Lord spoke to me and said, your preparation in different seasons have to do with the place where you rule in all seasons. God doesn't want you just to rule in one season, but in all seasons. In all seasons. He wants to give you an all-around seasonal voice. He wants to give you an all-around seasonal impact. He wants to give you an all-around seasonal influence. He want to give you a command in an all-season realm. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can stand and tell the devil, devil, I didn't get here by chance. I didn't stumble into this place. Devil, look at the mark of the suffering. A scar is your visa. To pass through legally without fraud or jumping over the fence to tell the devil, I came through the right door. It's your testament for all season training. It's your seal and certificate of graduation. Glory without scars is a calamity of pride, a formula for destruction. Pay the price. Jesus is still sitting today in glory with his scars without shame. The proof that he deserves a name above every other name. I feel stopping here, even though I still have much to say. And I would like you to close your eyes for a minute and begin to ponder on these words that are spoken as the oracles of God to you in this season. The God of systems is demanding of you and I. This is no time for you to begin to count how much you have sacrificed and begin to co compare with the output or the result. No, 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 no. It's not that time. God is demanding for the extra cost, an extra sacrifice. He said in the scriptures, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Alande bon si al prale ki antal pahianta. Le go le kal fre fitamasi lendos e kondaya. A hint ol riamahi lele enyantos il pea. Mali el ki antova il sere tuk manga. Ves il frodi yamahi la hande yalandaya. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice.
Aya ya male ele meti ki ala nanda ya. Feleku el frinde stobos el faria nantia. Those that have called to my altar to make a sacrifice with me. To seal a covenant. To settle a promise. I am calling you to higher places. I am calling you to higher places. Sure. You have sacrificed. But buy extra oil. Buy understanding. Buy understanding. Buy understanding by humility. The greatest currency to purchase understanding. Humility. Humble your heart before me. Surrender your lives before me. I am your God and the architect of your destiny. I know where I'm taking you to. I have created you for that reason. Even when you do not understand, I am leading you. I am guiding you. I am realigning you. Humble yourself before me. Abandon your life to me, says the Lord. And I will take you to higher heights. I will take you to panoramic views that you've never seen before. I will restore a fresh vision in your heart. Buy oil from me. Kaso temel enteria katuste. Legetesh el prayan tolsti peyan tal kati ala mahia. Felos e pre ala mahik el trebien dastofea. Ligento hito si meranto stabayande. Likarin tosia alinto se beia mahos te bea. Filo tiantea. Kilenia nori eterian tosi ke bele hantaya. Koria lande etianto linderi telebosi andala yante ki andoya. Leniando ki ala fasia telemosi andal pirandola. Lika yantia tia limoria tesi ando kaya. Allow me to sing over your life. Allow me to dance on you. Your destiny shall rise again. The business will rise again. Your project will find life again. Your ministry will find insight again. Let me give you understanding. And you humble yourself before the mighty hand of the Lord. Allow me to guide you. Where the sun rises and where the sun goes to its peak. Where the darkness of ignorance is eliminated. Where no powers of darkness can operate. Because the light of understanding is bright. You will cease to be a victim. And you will gain momentum. You will gain a movement that I will sponsor. You will gain insight that cannot be given by man. I will give you my knowing that you will may run fast. Wait on me. Allow me to prepare you a little bit more. To mold you a little bit more. I give you thanks, O God. Shaka bonde rebosta taka. Open your eyes and just look at me. I just want to say this word. Some people, some people, it takes prophecy to train them. But there are others and I put myself into that last category. And many of you, not to say this whole church, because we are one body and one family. It's not by prophecy that we are trained. Sometimes pain and affliction and suffering are the only remedy 
allocated to such destinies. To such destinies. Baby, my wife, your senior pastor, hear me. Pain and suffering are sometimes the only remedy allocated to such destiny as yours. People of cross point, hear my voice. Pain sometimes is the only remedy allocated to such destiny. Only there you will acquire an understanding that no book can give you. Kennedy, pain sometimes is the only remedy for such destiny. Douglasy, sometimes pain is the only remedy for such destiny. You are suffering. Pain. Sometime. Bishop Michel. That's it. Sometime pain is the only remedy allocated to such destiny. Grace. Sometimes pain is the only destiny allocated to such destiny. For you sons and daughters of this house, welcome to the prophetic journey where pain is no shame, but the only remedy allocated to our destiny. It leads us to a place of preeminence where glory is manifested and glory is maintained. God bless you. I love you. See you soon. Bye now.